Tady je 112, můžu poprosit o pomoc, potřebuji vám přehodit VGAčka na HDMičko, nějak to nejde. V pravým horním rohu. To teď jste jako, když kdyby tam to tlačítko HDMI, tak on takový nejde jakoby skliknout. Tak teřínku. to funguje, děkuji moc krát. Já, já vím, no, on říká, že bych vám uzavřel dvěmu nebo vám a on mě odpovídal, takže... Jo, super, díky moc, díky moc, na stole. Jo, dobrý, tak jo, super, díky, na stole.
Halo? Jo. 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 Hello everyone, please welcome Martin Strbačka. Once again, that's better, yeah. Uh, so again, my name is Martin Strbačka. Uh, I work for CZNIC and more concretely for our own project Tiris. Uh, if you haven't heard about it, I will, I will try to uh, tell you something from the three years long history of the project and hopefully you'll be, you will have a, a nice overview. Uh, so at first, a few words about CZNIC. Uh, we are the operator of uh, Czech TLD domain. Uh, we are not-for-profit organization uh, and because of that we are trying to do uh, projects for the good of the internet. Uh, just for example, one of our biggest projects and oldest, uh, BERT routing daemon or not DNS server, uh, and many more. Maybe you heard about it. Uh, we run. We also run the Czech national uh, CCS team, and everything we do uh, is open source. Uh, we strongly believe in it, and we are happy to. Uh, well, share our work uh, with anybody who wants to. Uh, so what is Project Turis? It's a security research project at first. Uh, it's a service for helping to protect uh, home networks. Uh, we created a Turis, uh, which is a, basically a router, uh, but it works as a probe, as a network probe, uh, in the same time. Uh, we uh, developed it and we produced 2,000 pieces of these routers uh, and gave it to the 2,000 Czech internet uh, users for one Czech round for three years. One Czech round is, well, less than one cent. Uh, uh, so that's a really, really low price. Uh, <laughs> because of that, why it's so cheap? Uh, because the, the people who, uh, who got the router, uh, they uh, signed a contract with us that they will share some information about their uh, network and about their uh, network flows with us. And we are trying to analyze these data and uh, look there for um, similar, similar behaviors of attackers and so on. And thanks to these facts, we are trying to, uh, well, uh, keep the internet, uh, keep the end users safe. Uh, when we found something, some, some, some attack, uh, we are cooperating with the CCR team and he is responsible then for contacting the user and tell him that something is wrong. Uh, how it all started? In 2012, uh, we started with a project called uh, Catalog of Routers. And in this project, we tried to uh, analyze normally available uh, small, small office, home office routers uh, and um, analyze how, 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 what's the status of these routers, how safe and how, uh, how good they are. Uh, but after one year of this project, we found out that it, the situation is quite terrible. Uh, the ro home routers are definitely not up to scratch. They are security holes, uh, cheap solutions, cheap chips. Uh, you can find a really um, cheap hardware solutions inside. And uh, regarding the software, it, it, there is really, uh, they are really slow at adapting new technologies like IPv6, DNSSEC, DNSSEC and so on. Uh, and if there is any security hole or any other problem, uh, there are almost no software updates. So there is no way how to get rid of these, uh, of these problems. 
So in, uh, a year later, in, two, in 2013, we decided to start with the Project Tourist. Uh, we decided that we need, a, we need a, our own hardware, or at least a hardware which runs our own software. And thanks to the software deliver, uh, delivers uh, a more, um, more secure solution for, for the end user. Uh, but about the hardware, there were three ways uh, to go. Uh, the first one was using existing hardware and put there, put there our own software. This is really cheap and easy, uh, but we, well, I can tell you that we cannot find the right device uh, because they're, they're, it was, devices were, um, they doesn't have enough of RAM, enough of storage, uh, enough of CPU power. So we try to ask few manufacturers uh, if they can modify uh, the router uh, for, to, to meet our needs. Uh, this is a little bit more expensive, uh, but who will modify only 1,000 of devices if they normally produce like 100,000 of devices? Well, nobody. Uh, so we decided to go uh, the third way, uh, make our own hardware. This is definitely not cheap and not easy, uh, but you can learn uh, a lot of things. So this is the output uh, of, of our work, uh, the, the project to race router. Uh, well, let's say in a comparison with other home routers, this is, let's say, a beast. Uh, if you understand at least a bit to, uh, to, the, to the embedded hardware, uh, you can easily uh, you can easily see this, see that from this specification. There is a uh, dual PC processor, uh, 1.2 gigahertz, two gigabytes of RAM, uh, 256 uh, uh, megabytes of NAND. Uh, the hardware is able to uh, route one gigabit per second without any problem. Uh, Two USB 2.0s RTC chip. This is quite unusual, but we need it for the DNSSEC, uh, which is enabled by default. Uh, there is also a crypto chip, which uh, help us to feed the um, entropy pool at the startup of the device. And uh, of course, I, I might mention the, our killer feature, which is the dimmable RGB LEDs. Uh, What's the operating system which, it, uh, it, which is inside the Tourist Router? Well, we call it Tourist OS, uh, but basically it's a fork of OpenWRT. Uh, if you don't know, that's a distribution for home routers with uh, 10 years long history. Uh, there are more than 3,000 packages available, and we gave all to the, all, to the, all the users uh, root access, so you can modify the setup of the, of the router in any way you want. Uh, why we decided to do the fork? Well, uh, we wanted to add, uh, add some, some features uh, we missed in uh, OpenWRT. And the most important one is automatic updates. Uh, we are trying to release uh, every month uh, a bigger release of new updates, new versions of software, and so on. Uh, but we do not stick to this plan, and sometimes we release uh, updates sooner. Uh, that's usually this is when some when we know about some problem with uh, some important software which which is inside the router. So just for example, uh, when we heard about OpenSSL Heartbleed or Poodle pro problem, uh, we were able to fix this box uh, in all the routers in a few days. Just prepare the uh, the update and. All the routers checks for updates periodically, so they will download that immediately and update itself automatically. We also add there some uh, some features which helps, uh, let's say, uh, normal users to set up their router without knowing, uh, without not knowing uh, much about how the network works, works and so on. So the configuration wizard, which is inside, is called Forest. It's written in Python, and you can see it on the on, on a few 
on a few slides here. It basically works as a, well, as I said, configuration wizard. So it will uh, help you to set up Wi-Fi. Uh, it will enforce the user to set up a strong password so it, uh, the router doesn't work without entering a strong password. So um, there, is, there shouldn't be a problem with uh, keeping admin admin uh, in the router for, for, uh, for the eternity. Uh, also, one of the steps in the wizard is updating the router. Uh, that's, that's the green, that's the green slides. So you can see there uh, which, uh, which software were updated at the first start of the device, and so on. Uh, we also add there a uh, software called Majordomo, and this will help you to, uh, to have an overview of which LAN client uh, talks to uh, which remote server. This, is, this can be helpful uh, if you have just, for example, a, a smart TV at your home and you want to see uh, where your smart TV phones to. So uh, if you can see in this, uh, in this uh, application that your smart TV is uh, sending something to some Chinese servers, uh, you can be quite sure that there is something wrong happening with your TV. Uh, I told you about the uh, data collection. Uh, so what are we collecting? Uh, we collect unsuccessful connections uh, and, and from both directions. That means when, some, uh, when somebody tries to uh, talk to your router but the port is closed or uh, if there is no service which answer to, to, the, to the questions, uh, we know about that. Also, uh, when your router or any device behind your router tries to communicate with a remote server, uh, but the server doesn't answer, uh, we log that too. Uh, we also do our various statistics from, from these uh, firewall logs. Uh, we collect packet flows that data. Uh, we, do, doesn't, uh, we don't do, do uh, deep packet inspection. Uh, but we look at the uh, IP address, uh, port, and, uh, well, SNI, if you communicate with, with uh, an HTTP server. We also collect uh, uh, pings. Uh, we are trying to ping a uh, few, let's say, important internet services like um, Facebook, Gmail, so on. And we are trying to compare this data and have a knowledge on uh, how, is your, um, how is your internet connection going, and so on. Uh, similar to the pings, we do certificate collecting, and this is definitely more interesting because uh, we are trying, again, to connect, uh, connect to Facebook and other services like this and compare the certificates we get from the, uh, from the server. So uh, if we know that uh, 1,000 of users uh, get the same certificate, but one of, uh, one of them have different one, then we again know that there is, that there is something, something wrong and we can contact the CCRT and he will contact the user and so on. Uh, we also has, uh, have uh, software called, called Minipot uh, that's an, well, uh, similar to Honeypot, but it's, it's smaller, so we call, we call it a Minipot. Uh, that's a Telnet server uh, which do just, we just, does just the, the handshake with the login. Uh, that means that we, we are able to uh, lock uh, how the attacker tries different login information and so on. Thanks to this fact, uh, we were able to catch a quite big uh, botnet made of uh, home routers. I will tell you about that later. Uh, we also have uh, something called Honeypot as a service. Uh, that means that the honeypot doesn't doesn't uh, run on the on the on the router, but or on our own server. And uh, if somebody tries to connect to the SSH on the router, we basically do a man in the middle attack on them and redirect them on on our own server. Uh, we then lock just like normal honeypot. We lock all the. Uh, uh, all the all the commands he uh, the attacker issued on, on the uh, on the router, and you can comfortably see that on your uh, on your on our web page through your profile. Uh, 
we use uh, Cowrie fork uh, for this. If you are interested, you can uh, see that on our GitLab on, on this link. Uh, well, when I tell anybody about data collection, uh, they always tell me that he doesn't want such a router at home. Well, so sh um, why you shouldn't be worried? Uh, we have got a positive Big Brother Award uh, in 2013. Uh, we have a separate, separate uh, database for accounts and for datas. And we also consulted our whole solution uh, with the Personal Data Protection Authority. And uh, we keep your data only for 10 days. Then it is deleted and our last four. four. So, what will you get for, uh, well, you share some, some, some kind of that data uh, with us. So, what will you get for, uh, for, this, for that? For example, you can see uh, uh, different kinds of statistics. This is one of them. So, you can see the share of uh, IPv4 and IPv6 in your communication. Uh, well, this is from my router, so you can see I am, I'm quite, uh, I'm using... Uh, uh, quite a lot of IPv6. And another, another thing is uh, passive bandwidth monitoring. Uh, so we monitor uh, what's, uh, well, how, how, do you, uh, how you use the bandwidth of your connection. So you can, you can judge from, from these, uh, uh, you can judge uh, how, uh, well, if you, need, if you need faster connection or uh, slower connection, you can judge it from these, from these graphs. Um, uh, I told you about the Honeypot as a service, and this is, uh, this is the UI where you can see uh, what the attacker uh, done or tried to done on your router. Uh, so uh, you can see here that somebody from China uh, tried to connect to your router. Uh, then he tried to uh, stop stop the fire, firewall, different kinds of firewall. Uh, then he tried to uh, download a file called Shao and try to execute that. And there are lots of, lots of other attackers who probably tried something, something similar. Uh, we know about every attacker from, from every router. So again, we can share this data with our CCR team and if there is uh, lots, of, let's say, lots of similarities, they, they can warn other users that there is some, some new, oh, say, danger. Uh, what's the biggest catches of, of the project race? Uh, we found two botnets. The first one was, uh, is, or is made from ACES routers. Uh, the, botnet ha the botnet has more than uh, 10,000 of devices, and we found them through the minipods because we found out that uh, at in the same time, a uh, lot of uh, attackers try to connect to the telnet uh, telnet ports uh, on the routers and use the same series of logins. So we uh, gathered all the IP address and. Uh, put it into Shoden, and he, will to uh, he told us that all of them are uh, well, almost the same ACE routers. So we bought, bought one, of the, one of the models and connected to the internet. Well, and in, in a few days, uh, we were part of the botnet as well. Uh, and the second one uh, was made of uh, Ubiquiti Air router. Uh, there were around six and a half thousand of devices. And, well, the, the problem with these routers were not so, not so bad, but still, well, the users just enabled uh, a remote, uh, remote management, uh, but left there the default uh, login, that means admin, admin, or something similar, doesn't matter. Uh, so it's, well, not a fault of, of, of the router, uh, but maybe the router should enforce the user to set up a stronger password before they can enable uh, the remote management. We also found 
a uh, few user PCs uh, connected to botnets uh, like Zeus and so on. And uh, we found out quite a lot of ISPs who breaks in, uh, internet neutrality or uh, network neutrality. That means they are redire redirecting uh, communications to their own servers. Typically, they don't want to, uh, they, they don't let you to connect to uh, remote SMTP servers or they try to um, uh, redirect your uh, DNS traffic and so on. We, we think that this is a, not a good behavior. So again, we contacted them and told them there are well, better ways how to, how to protect the users. Uh, well, most of the data, or all of the data, we cannot share it with anybody, but we try to uh, also help other, uh, other people to, uh, to stay safe. So at least we, uh, we have something called gray list, IP gray list. Uh, and this, this means that we uh, measure behavior of attackers uh, on uh, which attacks the routers. And, or at least, let's say uh, remote PCs who tries to um, connect to a router. Uh, we look on the, uh, this uh, communication and we uh, gave a score to each IP address. Uh, for example, uh, if a particular IP address tries to scan uh, one router, that, that means, well, score minus five, let's say. And if uh, the same IP address tries to scan uh, ports on thousands of routers, that means score minus thousand. And uh, if an IP address get uh, some amount of minus score, uh, we will put it uh, on the IP address gray list and it's ref refreshed or re regenerate uh, every week. Uh, the screenshot below it, uh, that's from uh, uh, some tool from our CCR team and every column uh, represents uh, an IP address of an attacker from our IP gray list. And this, uh, this blue row uh, means that the IP address is from, from Truis. Uh, other rows uh, means that the IP address uh, was caught also in different other services, uh, which CCR team uh, scan for, for similarities. So you can see that we are quite successful in a, in a um, measuring the bad behavior. Uh, we were, uh, well, the pro tourist project uh, were quite successful, and, or we think that uh, it was quite successful. And lots of, lots of people ask us uh, if they can buy the router and use it in, let's say, uh, well, any, anywhere outside of the Czech Republic. Unfortunately, this was not possible due to some rules of we set for the router, uh, for the project. But uh, we told ourselves that maybe we should do something with that. Uh, so uh, we made a new router, or we work on that uh, right now. And this is the answer for the high demand for the previous series. It's called Turisomnia, and it's this one. The first plan was to make a price, op uh, price optimized tourists because this, the previous one was quite, quite expensive. But as a side effect, uh, well, the router is just, just better in every way. It's more powerful, less power hungry, and so on. <laughs> uh, we, de uh, we decided to, uh, found, uh, to fund the project through the Indiegogo. Uh, so we set up a, a target for 100,000 US dollars, and we hit the target in 23 hours. Uh, right now, the, the campaign already uh, ended, but uh, right now it's in, in demand mode, so you can still buy it. And we, we gathered almost 1 million US dollars, which I think is quite a lot. <laughs> Well, so what's the hardware? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. 
Again, we are really proud on, on, on the uh, Ledbiot. So, <laughs> uh, the processor is uh, ARM, uh, Marvel Armada, uh, dual core again, 1.6 gigahertz. Uh, the power consumption is, well, around six watts in a normal usage, but it can be as low as, as 4.3 watts. Uh, there is only one gigabyte of RAM, but you can pay for uh, RAM upgrade on the Indiegogo. Uh, there is four gigabytes of eMMC memory, uh, SFP port, which is quite unusual on, on home routers, uh, two U USB 3.0s, uh, programmable RGB LEDs, <laughs> uh, three mini PCI Express uh, slots, and one of them is switchable to the MSATA mode. So you don't need to do anything, just buy SSD, SSD hard disk or reduction to the standard uh, SATA port and put it, put it to the slot and you can use it for, uh, to, uh, for connecting your hard disk. Uh, and the third uh, mini PCI Express slot uh, is prepared for connecting uh, LTE modem. Uh, so there is a, a SIM card, a SIM slot. Uh, again, there is RTC uh, and crypto chip. Uh, we also uh, we like Raspberry Pi, so we wanted to have a, well, at least similar uh, similar pinch pins which are available on the on the Raspberry Pi. So there there is a uh, there is a pin header uh, where you can find uh, ten GPIO ports, uh, two UARTs, SPI, and ITC. So uh, if you are really into uh, do-it-yourself with electronics and so on, I think you'll be, well, maybe happy and maybe you will replace your Raspberry Pi with Theresomnia. Uh, oh, this is, the, this is schematics, how, how, how the internet, uh, internal network connection uh, looks like. Uh, this is, again, quite... Uh, quite unusual uh, uh, across home routers. Uh, the CPU has uh, three Ethernet ex uh, interfaces. Uh, first one is connected to uh, the WAN port, and there is a uh, there is OR between WAN and SFP slot. So, when if you put uh, SFP module uh, to the SFP, well, to the SFP, <laughs> uh, the WAN port is immediately switched to the SFP. If you remove it, uh, it's switched back uh, to, the, uh, to the Ethernet. Uh, the rest of uh, the two uh, interfaces are connected to the switch chip, and the switch chip is fully manageable. Uh, so it's really up to you uh, how, uh, how will you set up it. Uh, you, can, you can, let's say, that the, the first three uh, ports will be connected to the uh, port 5, that means ETH 0, and the rest through the port 6 to the ETH 1, F, and then have a, uh, well, uh, well, um, well, you can, you can left your, leave your uh, LAN clients well, separate. Uh, this is how, how the board looks like. Uh, well, I think that all of you are able to uh, see the USB and SFP. This is the battery holder, processor, and so on. If you want to, uh, well, if you will have any questions, just ask me after then, and we can discuss it with these prototypes. Uh, software. Software is the same uh, as uh, with, the, uh, with the previous series. That means Turis OS, Fork of OpenWRT, it has the same feature set, uh, automatic updates and data collecting, but it can be turned off and the policy is opt-in. And because uh, if you buy Turisomnia, you are not part uh, of the tourist project uh, by default. And that means that uh, you, can, you can load in, uh, to, the, to the hardware any software you want. Uh, I'm already, I already know about some, some guys who are eager to try uh, put OpenBSD to the hardware and so on, and we will be happy to cooperate with them once we will have some free prototypes. Uh, 
we almost we al always like to say that this is more than just a router because it's really really powerful so you can use it as a decent home server for file sharing backup services anything you want uh, we already know about some people who use the uh, all the tourists as a let's say do it yourself home automation center uh, there are two Mm, software packages for these. Uh, one, is, one of them is called Home Assistant. The second one is Domotics. If you know about them, you, you, can, you can use it without any problems. Uh, you can use the router also as a Tor gateway uh, or uh, use other OWL software as, as uh, the NOT DNS server or BERT and many more. VPN without any problems. 100 megabits uh, per second in measured. Uh, through the VPN. Everything, as I, as I said, we love open source. So everything is open source and open hardware. Bootloader, operating system, power management firmware. Um, if we forget some, something, just ask us, and we have no problems to release it. Uh, we will release also uh, schematics and the full production documentation, but with a little delay. Uh, well, some, some people told us uh, that they found uh, some discussion in Chinese <laughs> uh, on some Chinese forum uh, that they are they would uh, they would love to uh, produce it uh, before us. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, if you want one, uh, I'll be really happy. It's as I as I already told you, it's uh, still available through Indiegogo. Uh, just uh, take a look at this link or. Uh, follow the, QR, the link in the QR code. Um, this is all I prepared, so thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yep. Certificates. Yeah, just you, you, uh, uh, mm, uh, we have a different kind of software. Uh, we do not collect it on the, let's say, packet level, uh, but we normally, uh, through some, some program or, um, let's say, a tool, uh, connect to the server and download the certificate. So. This is just for just for the certificates. We do, do not, as I said, we do not do the, the, packet, in, the deep packet inspection. Is it enough? Well, I didn't quite catch it. Well, <coughs> for the for the certificate collect. Uh, yeah, yes, I. Yeah, I understand you. Thanks. Um, we. Uh, we do that on a regular basis. Let's say um, twice a week, we will uh, connect to the remote service, as I, uh, the Facebook and so on, and then download the certificate and put them in the comparison from all the routers. So that doesn't mean that we, um, we do not, um, we are not looking on the certificate uh, every time when the user uh, connect to the Facebook. Yeah, yeah, that's our connection, our own connection from our own tool. <laughs> yep. Yep. So do you distribute paper? Uh, we, uh, there is a, by default, there is a package manager called uh, OPKG, uh, I think, and we try to update it as a normal, uh, as a normal Linux distribution. Uh, there is a there is a script as a as a wrapper script around the OPKG, and uh, it regularly asks for uh, for the update, and then update every like like. Well, it's the same if, uh, as if you up update your notebook with Linux. It works the same. So basically, you are writing OPKG updates in, in, in Chrome. 
Well, it's not that easy because there is, uh, we, al uh, we always release a plan how to uh, do the update because there is, sometimes there is a, um, things you need to take care of manu manually. Uh, and that's the reason for, for the plans. Uh, well, uh, we contact the, uh, the CCR team and tell them about the problem and share, um, share all the information with them. Uh, if it is, well, uh, a problem similar to the SS, SS routers which attacked the tourist, uh, tourist routers, uh, there is no way how to contact them because usually that's you know, routers from uh, Russia, South, um, South America, and so on, and you don't know who to contact. Uh, but if it is a uh, uh, user PC connecting to the Zeus and similar botnets, again, CCIRT will contact the user and uh, send them an email uh, about the problem and, uh, and information how to how to fight with the problem, and they can freely uh, contact them if they don't know uh, what to do. Well, it, it could be possible, but uh, we do not support any, any other hardware than, than our own. Uh, but if you have a uh, router uh, powerful enough, uh, I can imagine a few of them, I can tell you later. <laughs> uh, yeah, it can, it can be possible, but maybe there will be a few, few obstacles with the OpenWRT's uh, build route, a um, few things to tune and so on, but yeah, it can be possible. <laughs> Well, if you'll, if you'll ask us that, uh, or tell us that you want to buy a 100, 1,000 Tomias, we'll be really happy <laughs> to, talk, <laughs> to talk to you. <laughs> Can I run mainline terminal on uh, What? Can I run mainline terminal on uh, Not yet, but uh, we plan to upstream all the changes we make. Uh, Right now, it's basically about um, DTS tuning. Um, there is um, maybe I am not aware of about any other problems right now. Uh, yeah, out of time. Sorry, <laughs> but we have 4.4 kernel uh, right now. Thank you.
Nancy. Uh, also, uh, the keep, the keep, keep, also keeps the cover, you know, to get the pendants.